Our archives are not just about numbers and names. When you take a good look, who knows which voice will reach out to you and what tales will be told. Os ydych chi eisiau bod lled yn ei mynd, rhai ydych chi bod lled yn ei dibod. Let's remember the voices of our local women and listen to what they want us to know. I am mouthing the words. I have no voice to give. I keep my eyes down and try to control the shaking of my hands. Around me, there is a swell of voices, both frail and bold, punching the air with song. There are people stretching in all directions, dressed in black. We look like a murder of crows, gathered on a newly ploughed field. I can see the bandstand clearly from where I'm sitting. I was lucky to get a seat. There are many of the widows standing. On the bandstand, I can see a man of God, sleeves as white as snow, book in hand, while behind the brass band with their rosy-cheeked faces keep the tune in time. I look down at the order of service in my hand. Wrexham, parish church, then a line. Memorial service. Then underneath, the words underlined for those who lost their lives as a result of the explosion of Gresford Colliery, 22nd of September, 1934. It's a Sunday. Convenient, really. Miners don't work Sundays. I doubt the owners would allow us to remember the dead in the working week. Loss of life is one thing. Loss of profit is quite another. They even docked half a day's pay from the workers who died because they hadn't completed their shift. We are grieving for 266 men. 266. And yes, they were men, but they were also husbands and fathers, brothers and uncles, friends and cousins. Each one had a name. Each one had a family. I think about how they died on my darker days. Some would have been buried alive. Others would have choked on gas. Some of them would have been burned. And others would have been blasted apart in the explosions. Oh, my love. My husband. I can't help but think of you in pieces. I wake up in the night because I can hear you screaming. But men do not scream. They shout. Why are you screaming? I think there would be comfort in knowing how you died. It would answer one question at least. And there are so many questions. So many questions. There is smoke rising from the mine once more. It took less than a year for them to throw more men down the pit. More men to hack and dig in the dark. More men to make the rich richer and we are all the poorer for it. We should name you Gresford, the widow maker. Can you hear them, Joseph? Can you hear the hymn in the darkness? Do the voices soften through the mud, through the rock, through the coal? I hope the hymn is as soft as a lullaby as it reaches your ears and sings you to sleep. I can see you curled up like a baby, wrapped in soft blankets weaved from coal dust and angel wings. But what about me? 
I will not cry. My eyes are dry and I have done my best to try and harden my heart this last year. It's not good for the children. They don't want to see their mother burst into tears every day. Every day when a thought enters my head and I think of you. Bryn's old enough to work now. I want him to stay in school. He was always bright, but he's determined to be the new man of the house. I told him. The only work around here would be going down and working the mine. He agreed and said, don't worry, ma'am, I'll be fine. Will he be? Or is he going to follow in your footsteps in more ways than one? What choice does he have? He wants to be independent. He wants his own family, his own children. And who can blame him? Besides, there may be a miracle. Who knows? Perhaps he will hear the screaming in the dark, pull aside a boulder, and there you will be, his dad, alive and well. When the disaster first happened, there were people queuing up with money, the lords and ladies, the parish councils, the county of Cluid, the government, even the Girl Scouts I heard had offered to adopt a family with parcels of provisions. So, with eight mouths to feed, we should be able to pay bills and put food on the table. It's just... When all our chicks have left the nest, I'll be left alone. All the money in the world won't fill that seat next to mine. The bishop is speaking. I hear some of his words. I could wish that the criticism so readily directed towards the miners when he applies for a better reward for his labours were tempered with the equal readiness to appreciate the dangerous nature of his occupation. I smile and find myself nodding. This man knows his way around words. He knows how to use them to give a firm two fingers up at the establishment. I like you, Bishop. I suddenly remember the words I heard in a psalm at chapel. Though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I will fear no evil. Who would have thought that the valley of death was below our feet at Gresford Colliery? Oh, my husband. Rest now. Let go of my hand, for I must let go of yours. Let go of my love. Let me go. I've started singing the last hymn. No more sorrow. No more weeping. No more pain. Well, it seems I still have some tears left after all. <laughs> <laughs>